Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I am a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to define a custom mill tool holder. So the customization of your mill tool holder is very similar to what we saw when we did a custom mill tool. Uh, same sort of functionality, but different definitions. So let's take a look at the basics first. So anytime you're doing any kind of customization of anything inside of CamWorks or SolidWorks Cam, you need some sort of SolidWorks geometry. Now that could be an original model, that could be an original sketch, or it could be something you've translated. In my case, I went to a supplier's website and I downloaded this DXF file of a 3 16 shrink fit holder. Uh, and it has a CAT40 on the back end. So what I've done is I've taken that DXF and I've translated it into SolidWorks geometry. So basically that right there. Um, now, one thing to note is that when you define your mill tool holder, as opposed to when we did the mill tool, uh, we're not actually defining everything you see on screen right now. We know it has a CAD 40, we'll allow the uh, machine definition to add that CAD 40 for spacing and such. So we really just need that, that front bit, the bit that actually defines this as some sort of unique holder. So I'm just gonna minimize that and we'll go to my actual holder definition. And that's what we see here. I've removed the CAD 40 back end. I just have really just the bit from the CAD 40 down to the tip of the holder. And how I defined that was basically as a revolve solid. And if we take a look at the sketch that I used, it's a very simplified version of the sketch. I've removed all the internal bits. The only thing I have is the outside profile. And anytime you do any kind of custom mill tool or mill holder definition, you need to make sure that it's centered on the origin in the positive Y and the positive X direction. So this, cup, this positive quadrant here is where you need your sketch to be. You can turn that into a revolve solid. And then from there, we can go to the top right corner, go to user defined tools slash holder, and then switch this to type MH, so mill holder. And then from there, we could just browse to where we'd like to keep that shape. So you can see I've already saved this shape as a .mh file in my, my work folder here. So I'm not gonna save it, but if you were to do all of this, you would click the green check mark to confirm the shape definition. And then from that shape definition, we can go back to the top right corner here, go into our technology database or TechDB. And then we'll go into the mill tooling section. And then instead of defining this as a tool, we're gonna to go all the way to the right and go to holders and assemblies. We'll click on holders. And again, you can see that there are many holders that come with the software. What you're gonna do is you're gonna choose one of them and then click copy. So there is no new button. What you have to do is click one of these things that are very close to what you are already selecting, click copy. And you can see if I go down to the bottom here, I already have the one that I defined and just update the information. So what I've done so far is I've given it a name. So this will be a 316 string fit holder. I have it set to user defined because I'm gonna use that, that shape definition that I've already created. But one little trick to populate these values here, because you can, as you can see, I can't really populate them now, is we'll start by doing this as basic. So I can give it all this information here, and then when I switch this to user define, I can give it that information. So basic versus user defined, really just a way of defining the, the shape of the holder. If you go with basic, you can give it these basic dimensions here. I just wanted to see these numbers pop in here in case I want to use them later. But really you want to do user defined, tell it that it's type of shrink fit, and then you can just browse to that same shape uh, definition, the .mh file that I did before. So now this is part of my tech DB. Now let's go to a file where I'm actually going to use that holder. So if we take a look at this operation here, I have a 316 flat end mill. I'll just open that up. And if I go to my tool section under tool crib, tool 21 is the 316 tool. And under station 21, I'm using the shrink fit. Now, the way I assign that is essentially, I just recognize which station that tool is under. In this lower section, I'll just click on whatever holder is in that station and then click replace. And that brings up the list of the predefined holders in my system. I could just go down until I find my 316's shrink fit. Making sure I have that station highlighted, I can click select. And you'll see now that that has been selected and it's added as my holder. And again, you can see that the shape that I've defined starts at 
the end of the CAD4. You can see that blue dot, on, blue dot on the top there indicating the start point. And from there, you can see that all the information was populated, and the only thing I need to control here is the protrusion. And that is really just from the tip of that holder. So if I shrink this down to zero, that should be pretty apparent that we are now at the tip of the holder. So any number I put in here in the positive is going to be the protrusion of that tool. So let's say we just put in that inch and one eighth once again. You can see now that it updates. Now that is a way to get that holder to be part of your tech DB, but if you have the .mh file and you want to just get that on, on your file uh, without having to go through the definition, anytime you come to the mill holder section, you can always just browse to that .mh file and then just automatically apply it. It doesn't populate these values here, but it does bring in the shape and you have control over the protrusion. Now, one of the reasons why you might want to have some of those numbers there is because if you're doing any kind of work with the machine simulation, you definitely want to know how far this sticks out from the spindle in the cases of things like five axis. And the reason you want to make sure you remove that CAD 40 is for that spacing. So an example of that is in this machine simulation of the file we were just looking at, that blue dot lines up with the face of the spindle, as you can see there. So that custom tool, that custom holder, is defined from that spindle face there. So you can see now that if I were to do any machining with this, this holder in this machine sim, it's properly seated inside the spindle, and I can check for collisions using this custom holder. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call at the main tech line. Um, if you like these videos and you'd like to see more, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.